What's something you thought only happened in movies until it happened to you? I watched two blind people, strangers downtown, run into each other. It just seemed so random. One had a dog and one had a cane. I was trying to think of something to say, but hey you both blind and about to run into each other seemed rude. So I just watched it in slow motion and felt like an butthole. Random acts of kindness among strangers. One time I was broke and on the verge of being homeless in Vegas, staying at a pay by the week motel in a bad part of the city. I was due to be kicked out the next day and didn't have any way to pay the 200 bucks for another week. I was talking to some people on a local chat and mentioned it and one guy offered to give me the money. I was sure he'd want something for it, you know, but I had nothing to lose so I met him at a fast food place nearby and the guy just handed me 300 bucks. Told me the extra hundred was so I could eat for the next week, too, and then just said to be safe and drove away. Never saw or heard from him again. Pay it forward right there. One stepped on a banana peel on the sidewalk just to see what would happen. Leg flew out from under me exactly like in the movies. Next thing I know I'm on my bus on the sidewalk telling my wife holy crap. Those things are slippery and you can imagine the look she was giving me. So aside from the banana, you also have the common trope of the sensible wife and doofus husband. Random fireworks when others I was proposing to my girlfriend. It wasn't a holiday or weekend. You guys are the main characters. You know the scene in the movie where the main character gets blasted with water from a passing car? It's raining. Everything sucks. Then just to drive it home they get doused. Well, everything sucked. It was raining. Walking a mile and a half back home in a torrential downpour with multiple bags of groceries. Having some deep thoughts or whatever. When. Vvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvvv
fire dancers, a full-blown DJ stage, and dab rigs spread throughout the house. This legit happened to me in April. My first thought was this is some dumb movie crap. Had been seeing this girl for a few weeks and we had a hotel by Big Sur. She went through my phone while I was sleeping and my most recent texts were three girls. If she had bothered to read them she would find I often use my personal cell phone for work. I work in IT. And I was helping them with problems. But nope. She slams the phone down and runs to her car as I say I can explain. But she just drives off to her parents who lived nearby and never answered her phone. I didn't really continue to try to get to hold of her because I really don't want to be with someone that reacts that way anyway. Could you spend few weeks and not few years with her? I knew this guy that was down on his luck in high school and had lost faith in hard work ever paying off. I told him I was determined to find him a four leaf clover. Searched every day in this big field of clovers by my house. Did this for weeks and then off and on for months. A year went by but I never truly gave up and would occasionally go out looking. I even prayed to god I'd find one because the guy really seemed to have faith in me proving to him that working for something and believing in yourself pays off. Near the end of senior year, I had pretty much given up, but would still kneel down to look at clover patches in occasion. Then one day, my sister comes in and says if I saw our pond, we have a huge pond, it's more like a small lake. I said no and she says there are tons of four leaf clovers so I go running out and there are thousands of them everywhere. Nothing but four leaf clovers. I gave one to the guy and he was seriously moved. He got into the military and every now and then he sends me a pic of the clover. He always keeps it with him. Friendship goals. That's unbelievably kind. Sometimes little things make an enormous impact. Stepped on a rake. It wasn't an accident. I just wanted to see if it would actually happen. Quite painful for my 10 year old forehead. Sigh. I did the same thing when I was a young kid. Also pee on an electric fence. Not at the same time. Not proud of it, but it helps knowing I wasn't alone and doing it. Landing the girl of your dreams. Had the biggest thing for a pretty, pale chick in my geometry class freshman year. Made some moves that all flopped. She was quiet and all mysterious, which made me just crazier for her. Moved on, but never stopped digging her. Most beautiful girl ever. Then one day, over a year after I graduated I was depressed and alone. Figured I'd hit her up on Facebook because I had nothing left to lose. Got to know each other, turns out she's just extremely shy and socially awkward. After some months of being friends, I asked her on a date. That she tried to persuade me that I wouldn't like her. My 5 year obsession wasn't about to lose that debate. Now we're engaged. I love her so much. Was eating dinner with my mom the other day in a small restaurant. It was a pretty quiet place so generally people talk quietly to their table. Well the guy at the table next to us was having an interesting conversation about dogs pooping and tracking it into the house and fun dinner topics like that. So the ladies at his table were desperately trying to get him to shut up and he finally quieted down for a few minutes. Until he said can I just say one more thing without hesitation the whole entire restaurant turned to him and yelled no it just seemed like something you'd see in a sitcom or something. It was hilarious. My wife and I went to NYC for the first time a couple of years ago during the summer. We were there in August during a heat wave. We were staying at an Airbnb in the Bronx. And as we were searching for it, we were driving through neighborhoods where the fire hydrants were spewing water throughout the streets. Children were playing in the water like it was no big deal, literally filling water balloons with the pressure coming from it. I thought that was only a thing from Hey Arnold, but apparently it is a totally normal thing during heat waves in NYC. As a New Yorker born and raised this made me chuckle, yeah in the barrios we are just like Hey Arnold lol. Baguettes in France. I saw an old man on the side of the road wearing a high vis vest, a walking stick, hunched over carrying a bag of baguettes. It's legitimately surprising that everything in France is baguettes. Hot dogs were baguettes. All bread was baguettes. I saw a kid beating his sister with a baguette. Best part is I don't blame them. Baguettes straight out of the blue langri are magnificent. All bread are not baguette we have many different bread. Baguette are delicious but don't last long. In one day it becomes very hard. So if you want to use it to punch your siblings it's better to wait. Feeling like you can't breathe when you're grieving a close loss. 
It sounds so cliche, they say it all the time in movies and on TV, and then you experience it and it's exactly the way they say. I'd lost people before, but always older. Kind of expected. Recently there was a sudden loss in our family of someone much younger and I'm still trying to process it. After the first few weeks it got easier, but sometimes out of nowhere I find myself feeling like there's suddenly nowhere. It will take a while. It sucks. I'm sorry for your loss. Me and my brother once saw a homeless guy, classic homeless guy with fingerless gloves, an old army jacket, and a beard that hadn't seen a blade since Reagan probably kicked this dude out of his institution. And the kicker, he was carrying a long stick like a broom handle, with a handkerchief tied around the end and all of hit crap stuffed into the handkerchief. Oh, and the handkerchief was red with white polka dots. So this guy was either a method actor researching his role as a hobo in a new Little Rascals reboot, some kind of performance artist, or a time-traveling homeless man from the 1920s who hasn't discovered shopping carts. That bag on a stick is called a bingle. I hope I get to see a real one someday. I was approached by three dudes I've never met in my life when I was 12 who then proceeded to bully me. One who looked like a dang near carbon copy of Dudley Dursley, movie version and two skinny minions. I was 70 pounds soaking wet and a tiny girl child so Dursley smacked the frog I just caught out of my hands and squeezed it in front of me until its eyes began to swell. The other two jeering in the background. Sucks for him though. I spent most of my childhood stomping through creeks. Lifting up fallen tree logs bigger than Emmy like it's woodland crossfit. I could pick up sewer covers by that age barehanded. I punched him in the nose so hard I heard the crack Dursley and his cronies went all jaw dropped before the dickhead threw the frog at my face for retaliation. It hit, but I caught it as it bounced off and booked. Never saw those shoots again. TLDR. Found myself amidst a year novel with classic year novel bullies. Okay this is kinda funny. I live in Colorado, and where I live we don't have straight roads. Like every road in my town turns. So as a kid I always thought that straight roads like on maps in the movies didn't actually exist. Or, this is so innocent and endearing. High velocity blood loss. I got sliced with broken glass when I fell with a bottle in my hand. The bottle smashed in my hand and stabbed pretty deep. When I got up and opened my fist blood squirted from my hand in sync with my pulse. It was quite the oh crap moment. In high school, I had an assignment due for extra credit. I left it on the table in the living room so that I wouldn't forget it as well as look over it in the morning. The morning of I noticed it wasn't there. I asked my mom if she moved it. She hadn't. I walk over next to my dog who has half my essay hanging out his mouth. I made him watch as I threw away all of his treats. TL. DR. Dog ate my homework. My dog ate my sheet music once. My mom had to write a note and staple it to the shredded paper. I've been a cop for about 3 years now in a mid-sized town. Responded to robbery a while back where a witness said I missed them by a second or two. I go the direction the witness pointed me toward and I send another team the opposite's direction just in case. Suspect came out the shadows in the alleyway and shot my buddy in the heart. His vest caught the bullet and he's okay. We caught the guy a few minutes later. Sometimes I feel like I'm living a bad buddy cop film haha. This is fantastic and I remember it fondly. I hated this guy in one of my classes. He was pretentious and always acted like he had something to prove. I used to draw caricatures of him in class while he yammered on and on. At the end of the semester, our professors had a party during which a few of us got tipsy. Come to find out that outside class this guy is actually fairly chill and quite witty and funny. I had made a big show of hating on him so it felt weird to end up at a bar chatting with him. We walked out and parted ways despite some obvious mutual attraction. I was almost to my car when I said frick it, turned, and ran full tilt into his arms. We kissed passionately on the street while bar patrons looked on. Even though we eventually broke up, it was my most Hollywood moment. Many years ago, before cell phone cameras, unfortunately, my friends and I smelled smoke and saw speeding fire trucks so we naturally went to investigate. A warehouse type building had caught on fire and flames were shooting out of the upper floor. The sign on the wall clearly proclaimed, A1 fireproofing. Gunshots. And they sound nothing like they do in the movies. I thought they were firecrackers until I saw people reacting to them by ducking and laying on the ground. 
I was driving home from work on a rainy night when I saw a white work van driving all crazy and very fast. I slowed down and let him pass me because I was worried he would swerve in my lane and hit me. 4 lane highway. I watch him drive erratically down the road and it is pouring. All of a sudden he swerves, skids off the highway, then did a 360 in the air before landing in a ditch on all four wheels on the side of the highway. It was like watching a bad movie scene. I've never seen a car flip in the air before or since. Especially because of the dark and rainy aspect. I pulled over, called 911, and gave a statement once the police arrived. The worst part about it was that he had two teens in the back of the van who weren't strapped in, but they survived. Stuck in standstill traffic. Took the first lane I could which is not the one I need, I know trying to get over is going to be a pain. Until I see the person in the car next to me is my brother and he knew I would need over. He rolled his window down and told me to get in front and we gave each other updates on what we knew was going on. But that timing was amazing. Talked to this gorgeous girl at a party for hours. We had a great time. Played drinking games. Told jokes. Both of us were laughing. We had the same interests. It was great. No balls either. We seemed like peas and carrots. Eventually she said she had to go leave with her friends and I was too nervous at the time to ask for her number. She said goodbye and walked to her waiting friends in their car across the street from the party. I moaned to my friends about letting her get away and they said come on dude. Go after her so I said you know what. Frick it. Downed my beer and ran to the fence in the backyard we were in. Jumped it and sprinted to her car that was still parked at the corner at the end of the street. I could literally hear the corny rom-com music playing in my head as I ran to her. Slid smooth F right up to the car, knocked on the door, and her friend opened it. Out of breath, panting, I poked my head in the back seat and said hey, I got to ask, what's your number? The music in my head was at a crescendo at this point, and then she responds I have a boyfriend. Every note in my head immediately shut off. I stared at her, she stared at me, her three friends and the car stared at both of us. I just silently did an about face and walked away. I swore I was in a comedy film in that moment. Who off. Last night I literally had a dream within a dream. It's something I never really thought happened in real life. It started with me dreaming and thinking I had woken up. I was telling my BF about my dream for a bit, and after what felt like a half hour later, I actually woke up. What's crazy is my BF woke up at the same time and said he had a weird nightmare. Definitely spooked me a little. I have this all the time. It's so surreal to wake up and realize you weren't actually awake. My current situation. So, after I left college, I found myself at my parents place for, well, several months. Trying to get a jump start on my life but only running into dead ends attempting to apply for jobs in my field. So I was stuck delivering pizza for Domino's for the time being. Around halfway through July, I recalled my dad saying something about the Washington Conservation Corps, an AmeriCorps program that would be the perfect place to start in order to get experience. So I look online, see all the open positions, and apply for each and every single one. I wanted to get on with it so badly, I didn't care if it was out of area. I get callbacks for interviews from 5 crews, most of which are in area, around Seattle, except one, a forest restoration crew out of Wenatchee, due to distance. That one had to be a phone interview, and I just assumed at the time, after it finished, that it would just kinda be so like the others. The Wenatchee guy is the first guy to call back and say yes. I'm excited, of course, but it also opens up a daunting challenge, finding a place to live in less than 2 months. I've never lived on my own before other than at college, so me and my family go and look up places. Most are out of my budget, the few that aren't are snatched up too quick. It got to be the middle of this month, September, and my final chance comes from a room for rent. I do everything to increase my chances, not only answer the questions honestly and show I'm interested in the place, citing my job as the reason for looking, but also requesting to see it in person and even visiting with the main roomie for a couple hours. After that, I wait the weekend, biting my nails hoping I get it, since if I don't, I'll have to turn down the position and be back at square one. Tuesday morning, prior to work, person texts back. Describing it as a tough decision, 
but I won out, so, now I'm about to embark on my biggest life change so far, living with two roommates, both girls, and I'm a guy, with a bunch of geek friends I would fit in perfectly with, and outdoor adventures on my job, in a new area and a fresh start, we'll see where it goes from here. Obviously your own sitcom. When myself and three friends all approached each other at a four-way intersection in a completely unplanned yet perfectly timed meeting. That scene in Casablanca where Rick said the of all the gin joints in the world quote happened to me. I was home from college and me and all the dudes from the family go to a bar for drinks. They kept pestering me about an ex that I recently broke up with. And wouldn't you know it. She was actually in that bar and all I could think of when my uncle sat her down next to me was that Humphrey Bogart quote. Figuring out that my grandpa's girlfriend was trying to kill him. When we started piecing things together, we said, this crap really happens. You just never expect to be in a situation like that. So weird. We need the story on this. A hazy. Tunnel vision kind of out of body experience hearing someone in your background on the phone with 911, or your whatever emergency number, I remember hearing a male voice going there are two people down and being like, I'm one of those people, I'm down. Really awkward my grandpa heard me having sex, loudly, for a very long time when my bf and I hooked up for the first time, I brought him back to my place, which was a guest house behind my grandparents house. It was quite a night. The next morning I checked my voicemail. There were several messages from him. And they are. Hey, you okay? Thought I heard something. Love you. Are you alright? Do I need to call the cops? Just call. I'm coming back there to check on you. Answer the door. And that was the last message. There was no knock. He didn't even get on my porch before he knew that I was praying. To God. The next morning, BF and I listened to the messages in horror. We'd both been a little drunk, and it got amazingly out of hand. We never heard the phone. We never heard anything. BF and I left, to go back to where we'd left his car the night Beffler, because, safety, and my guy introduces himself to grandpa, not blinking. I think he was a little proud of himself, and I think grandpa respected that we never talked about it. Yeah, awkward sex moment with your parents. Pocket dialed my dad during a quickie with my boyfriend in high school. I hung up and cried. Then called him back trying to tell him we were watching a movie. We never spoke of it again. I think about it now and wish I was dead. Destiny bringing two people together. I don't actually believe in that but here's what happened to me. In the summer of 2015 I took my brother, who was on leave at that time to a fish concert. While my brother was getting beers for us I saw a very attractive guy eating cotton candy. I approach hot guy and strike up a convo. Long story short we exchanged numbers and parted ways. Over the next month he took me out on three amazing dates. We got to know each other and I could tell we definitely had a connection. One night he was taking me home he told me he's got some stuff in his life he was working out and unfortunately couldn't pursue our relationship at that time. I was upset but totally understanding and appreciative that he was man enough to let me know. Fast forward to a year later. Hot guy texts me out of the blue. We catch up a bit over text and he eventually asks me if I'd like to go out and catch a drink with him. I said I'd love to but it could only be platonic. I had a BF at the time. We never ended up getting drinks to catch up. I wanted to but I felt that it would be inappropriate to my current BF. Okay. So fast forward another year. Hot guy texts me again. He says he's going to a couple of fish shows coming up and had been thinking a lot about me. I got butterflies like a little school girl. Truth is, I hadn't stopped thinking about him since I had first met him years ago. He asks if I'm still in a relationship and I happily inform him that I'm single. We set up a time to meet up for dinner and it went great. We still had the exact same feelings for one another that we had when we first met. That was over a year ago and we've been together ever since. That's beautiful. It's also the nicest thing I've seen in a very long time. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.